Hey folks, Blackcross here, and welcome back to another edition of the PlayStation 2 Legacy. So, uh, in the past, I've talked about video games that I have either rented in the past, followed by video games that I'm just now finding and discovering and trying them for the first time. But there's actually a trend that I had followed uh, in basically the mid-2000, followed by close to the 2010 era. Um, Basically, I have a friend of mine by the name of TJ. Uh, we have been friends for over 20 years. Still going on right now. So with that being said, I still look at him as one of my best friends of all time. And if he's watching this, hey TJ, how's it going? I want to kind of introduce one of the many games that he has introduced me. Uh, I've kind of done the same way for him. I've introduced him to many other video games that he has never played before. But in the early days, he has more or less introduced me to many video games. He was the one who introduced me to stuff like uh, Ratchet and Clank, uh, Devil May Cry, Resident Evil for that matter. The list goes on. He has done more of introducing me to different video games in our younger years. And then in the later years, because of me collecting more video games, he has more or less borrowed video games from me. And it's more or less of a return favor type thing, if you will. But one of the many games that I have borrowed from him, and I hold true memories to, is this game right here, known as EOE, Eve of Extinction. Now you're probably asking yourself, okay, the cover, the cover doesn't really tell me much of what I'm looking at. What is this, basically? If you will, allow me to explain. Imagine a combination of combat style of No More Heroes, on the PlayStation 2, obviously, but uh, the other interesting factor is that, technically speaking, people's souls have been embedded into weapons. Yeah, let that go through your head right now. <laughs> really, there are two main factors that I love out of this game. Number one being the fact that it's a hack and slash game, so that's an easy, obvious agenda. I love hack and slash games as much as any other person out there, but another factor is that as you go through the game and you beat certain people that have these soul bedded weapons, you also attain them yourself. So that makes the game a lot more extensive and interesting due to the fact of the massive amount of different weapons that you can attain. And these different weapons have different abilities about them. So <laughs> in honor of my best friend TJ, again if you're watching this, hey, um, I'm going to be playing this. And you're going to be reminiscing with me as we play through the first level and a half and show you how this game plays and stuff. And maybe you'll get an idea as to how great this one is. Also too, a funny thing about this, this is technically one of the very last remnants of video games that I own where the remnants of amps was there. Uh, <laughs> kind of let you see this from a close angle. Amps uh, used to be a video renting store, if you remember me talking about in my earlier videos. And uh, this was one of the many games that they were selling when they were going out of business before they became a tanning salon. So this was the last remnants of Amps, and I wanted to go ahead and get this. So yeah, now you know this is a little bit interesting, not only in terms of my friendship with TJ, but also the connection that I have with my old renting store, Amps. So. That's, I thought that would be interesting to tell. Alright then guys, so welcome to EOE, Eve of Extinction. We're going to go ahead and get this game started here, so without further ado, hope you enjoy what you're about to see. A date in the sky with you? How romantic. What's next? Don't worry, you'll have a real date soon enough. <laughs> a date with your girlfriend. <laughs> or maybe I should say, with the legacy. Yeah, so see, his girlfriend has been turned into a weapon known as the Legacy. Don't be angry. All this has been planned from the start. What are you? Your research at Wisdom Incorporated, even meeting that woman, it was all planned so that the Legacy could be born. What's happening? We're losing altitude. Damn it. We're carrying the EOE. 
E. <laughs> you can kind of see how it kind of resembles that of uh, No More Heroes sort of in a way due to the saber sword not quite the same made as uh, Travis's sword but it's somewhat close sort of like a actual lightsaber from a Star Wars yeah, sorry we can't be part of your plans for world domination. Is now a good time to talk about that retirement plan? Hmm. Take this instead! Show them what you've got! It's been a while since I played this, so I'm trying to learn the controls again. The funny thing is, you actually get another weapon too when you start, so... And you see that percentage right there? That's basically the experience bar for the individual weapons. Note how whenever I switch it, it has different experience. And of course you can fight hand-to-hand -hand combat if you wanted to. But of course naturally, by doing that, you're risking yourself for really a major beatdown, so highly recommend it that you just stick to the weapons. Here comes more baddies. <laughs> this reminds me of Help me Josh Elio <laughs> Not good. Yeah, so it has quick time events, but they're very easy. Nope, never mind. I'm bad at it. It's like they're fairly easy to get through, but no, I I'm terrible at them still. And that thing's about to blow. Josh, hurry! There's another agent hiding in the next room. The enemies with items are marked. Look carefully. Now then we should head back to where that door was blocked off. Previously locked shutter. Try going back there. Oh yeah, I forgot there's fall damage. That's not good. Equip the rod and press the action button to jump. While in midair, switch to your bare hands to grab the ledge. That's not good. Doing really terrible right now. I keep pressing the X button. I keep thinking this is Kingdom Hearts. That's my problem. 
There we go. Use the rod jump and switch to your bare hands to grab onto the pipe. Use your left analog stick to move sideways. You can pretty much see how far in terms of gameplay we've come across, but to this one, hold, for it being the PlayStation 2, really push in terms of being able to platform and everything. Ready for a legacy drive. Here goes, legacy drive. Trace the pattern on screen with the right analog stick. There we go. And that's how the legacy drive works. Which is basically your ultimate finisher move. Okay, now I just gotta figure out where are the two legacy uh, C's are. That's the question. But right there, that was a level up right there, so that gives you an idea as to why you would want to increase uh, the weapon's level, so that way they can learn more combo moves. The hardest one, though, is whenever they get to be level 1, because that's like a slog in order to get them to a higher power. But once you get there, they start to become real handy. Oh, that's right. I see a subway. I didn't even think of that. It's like, oh, that's right. If we just had a key to this shutter. Of course we need a key. And the sword is leveled up now. Josh, a key. Pick up the key. Just did. This key should work on a door somewhere. All right. Now, surely to goodness, one of the legacies should be here. Or we end up on the other side. I see two of them, though. Josh, there it is. A lacy. I see where this is going. This is going to take some major Kung Fu style. Or that. To use the Brad's legacy drive, we need one more legacy. that one more is somewhere nearby. There's a lazy on the rooftop. At the very you top of the roof. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh. That's not good. I may fair will end up being dead.
This is terrifying, folks. This is terrifying. Did it! Okay, never mind. We need to come up with something before we can make the jump. Yeah, very carefully, guys. Maybe we can lower its arm to get it closer to the other side. Any ideas how we do that, then? Try breaking the strut that holds up the crane. Now I think we're a bit closer to the building. Use the rod to jump across. Very carefully, because, uh, one false move and I could... Very well be a pancake. Which would not be fun. Yep, well that was not good. <laughs> now let's try this again and this time do better. Ooh! Rod's legacy drive. The rod's legacy drive creates a rain of lightning in front of you. Now let's go back to the main street and try out the legacy drive. Make it a long way back. So it's going to be a long trot over there, but we'll eventually make it. There we go. Yes, I think we did it. The main door is now open. Yes. Hurry, let's get in. And we'll encounter our first boss. So without further ado, this is where the main part of the game kicks I in. Something coming. A, a presence like He's got his own legacy. We need to find his weakness. Get rid of his shadow! Will not be easy, though. He's going to keep doing that. There we go. That hurt.
Doing good now. Maybe not. There we go. Got him. It's a guitar. With this weapon, you can hit enemies up into the air. Yep. <laughs> Got it. Oh boy. I don't know, but I felt it. An entity like me. Legacy aura. See, whenever you get a new weapon, it's usually the hardest one to get uh, leveled up because of how weak it is at the moment, because it can only do like one hit at a time. But once you level them up really high, they become really useful weapons later on. Okay, seriously, that's enough. is heavily guarded. There must be something important inside. Gotta get to that. Once we get this thing leveled up, you'll get to see how really useful it is. There we go. Yeah, he got himself killed through the ba uh, battle axis as well. Poor guy. A Buddha. <laughs> kind of acts like uh, Reno from Final Fantasy VII. Actually, their design is kind of, kind of somewhat the same. Ouch. <laughs> there we go. Now we're going to get more power. These things are freaking awesome. Once you get them level up high enough, they're practically nuts. The first lacy for the guitar is set. That hurts. There we go. We'll find the next one here in a little bit. And hopefully I can show you the second boss fight. Level four now. I forgot what the max level is, but uh, I'm pretty sure Josh, that it's like maybe level 10, I believe. I am willing to admit I'm completely wrong. Now we can use the Qatar's legacy drive. Its legacy drive will shoot out a powerful jet of water. Gotcha. My 
name is Raven. Nice to meet you, Raven. No, this can't be. Legacy? See what I mean of how incredibly useful this weapon is? You can just juggle the enemy themselves and they won't be able to do anything. And it's a good thing too, because this guy is hard. I mean, if you thought the first one was hard, this one is more so. And I'm spamming the button, I admit, but it helps. Considering the fact that his guard is always up, almost. There we go. Whew. Technically, you're not supposed to kill him yet. Ouch. Who in the hell was he? He says so himself. Raven. All right, here we go. Ouch. Okay. There we go, much better. Josh, get the key. Let's get inside the mansion. Here we go. Next boss. Someone Be careful. who is very Japanese oriented. Ouch. He's almost dead. Crap. Gotcha! Whew! That one proved a little bit difficult. It's a snake sword. Use the action button to shoot out the blade. It can be used for grappling. With two lay seeds, you'll have the power to temporarily stop time. <laughs> That'll come in real handy later on, too. 
All right, then. Well, that's going to be it for this particular video. I hope you enjoy uh, one of my fond memories when it comes to the PlayStation 2. Uh, so this is EOE, Eve of Extinction. Definitely check it out. Not a lot of people know about this, but definitely do. This is really one of the good ones. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Black Cross signing off. Catch you guys later.